Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, my son, you remember before when we talked about the linear or translational motion, okay, this is um, an object, and if I give it a certain uh, uh, speed, it moves like this. Does it have kinetic energy while moving? Yes, we can calculate its kinetic energy. It's very simple. It is one half m v square. Why? Because it has a mass m, and uh, all of it is moving with the same v. Okay, all parts. This part, this part, that part. All of them have the same uh, v. So, in case of translation, in translation, translational or linear motion, translational motion. Translational motion means my object moves from one pl one place to another place. All of it has moved. Okay. Uh, K translation we have defined to be one half m v square. Okay. What about the kinetic energy for rotation? In rotation, as we have discussed before. We have this uh, stick or this ruler. I want to rotate it about this point which passes through its center of mass, okay? Exactly at the middle. And it starts rotating, okay? Does it have kinetic energy? Yes, it has kinetic energy because it can do a work while rotating. It can hit something, it can hit my hand, at might hurt my hand, it might move a certain object while rotating, it might hit some other object and move it. So it can do work, so it has kinetic energy. Okay, but how to calculate this kinetic energy? As you, if you remember, each point has its own V. This point, closer to the axis of rotation, has a small V. Further, point will have larger V. Larger V, larger V. So each point will have its own V. How to calculate the kinetic energy then? Okay, so to calculate the kinetic energy for the case of rotation, let me call it K sub R. This will be one half. I need to divide my object into small masses. Okay, so I have, this is my axis of rotation. I have a small mass here, M1 multiplied by its uh, velocity, okay, plus m2, m3, m4, so I have many, many, many small particles, okay, so I have one half m1 v1 squared plus one half m2 v2 squared plus one half m3 v3 squared, okay, such that I cover all the small masses I have divided my object to, okay? I'll divide it in small, small, small pieces, okay? And each piece will have its own uh, uh, mass and velocity, okay? But now the object is rotating, okay? So I have to convert these V1, V2, V3, I can convert it to omega. All of them are moving with the same omega. So I will write it as one half M1, R1 square, omega square, okay? I replaced V, remember, remember, remember that V equals R omega. So replace V1 with R1, omega 1, but omega 1 is the same, omega 2, omega 3, omega 4, the whole rotating object will have the same omega, okay? Plus one half M2, R2 square, omega square, plus one half M3, R3 squared, omega square, plus, 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 etc. As you can see, omega can be taken out as a common factor, okay? And I can have the following. One half is a common factor, multiplied by M1, R1 square, plus M2, R2 squared, plus M3, R3 squared. So I can write this as sigma over i, m i, r i squared, okay? And as a common factor, I have omega, omega squared. I hope this is clear. Omega is the same for all points, whether close to the axis of rotation 
or farther from the axis of rotation. Okay? Now, I'll do a small trick. I take this quantity between brackets and I call it, I give it a name. It is called the rotational, rotational inertia. And sometimes in other textbooks we call it moment of, moment of inertia. Okay, some other books you might find it, it is called rotational mass. Okay, so these stand for the same uh, quantity, which is this sigma over i, m i, r, r i squared, rotational, rotational mass. Okay, and we'll give it the symbol i. So, all of this between brackets, I give it the symbol uh, i. So, kinetic energy for the case of rotation, kr, is one half i omega square. You see? What is I? It is this, rotational inertia or moment of inertia or rotational mass, as you wish. And it is nothing but sigma over I, M I, R, I squared. Also, it's very nice result here. KR is very similar to KT. One half, I have one half. Uh, the mass, we replace it with I, Okay, and this is why we call it rotational mass, because it replaces the mass, okay? And here we have V square, in the case of translation, we replace it with omega squared. So it is very much similar to uh, K in the case of translation, but we replace the mass with the rotational mass, or rotational inertia, and we replace the V, the linear velocity, with omega, which is the angular velocity. So let me focus now on this I. Uh, of course, this kinetic energy, if you use the SI units, I, as you can see, has units of kilogram meter square, and omega is radian per second. If you use these units, SI units, you will get K, the kinetic energy in units of joule. It is the same kinetic energy we are used uh, to, and uh, we have seen before. So I, I is not I am, no, I'm talking about this I, which is the moment of inertia. I'm not talking about myself. This I is the symbol used for the moment of inertia. Huh? It is this I. Is equal to, okay, so I is defined to be, this is definition, sigma over I, M I, R I squared. Okay, what is this R? This R, it is not a radius, my son. Some students, when they hear R, O is a radius. Not necessarily to be a radius. This R is how far is this mass from the axis of rotation. Okay? Tells you the distance of uh, the mass from the, or to the axis of rotation. It is the distance between uh, the mass uh, to distance between between the mass and the axis of rotation. Okay? I is a scalar quantity. A scalar quantity. It is not a vector. Okay? It has units of of, as you can correctly guess, it is kilogram multiplied by meter, meter square. And there is no short uh, uh, symbol for kilogram meter. We just use it, kilogram meter, meter square. Okay, let me give you a feeling, what is this uh, moment of inertia or this rotational inertia? I want you to focus on this example. I would like to have the camera here uh, for the table. In the case of translational motion, I have many objects here, but let us focus on this book. The book has heavy mass, okay? And I have this pen, it has a small mass. 
What does it mean an object has a small mass uh, or large mass? The book has large mass. It means it has more resistance to motion. It doesn't like to change its state of motion. Now it is at rest. It doesn't like to move. Okay? It has more resistance to the change in motion. But for the pen, it has a small mass, so it has a small resistance to motion. Okay? You can easily move it. This one, it is more difficult to, to move. So small mass has a small resistance to change in, in the motion. Large mass has large resistance to the change in motion. Let us now talk about I, the moment of inertia or rotational, rotational inertia. If an object is rotating and it has a small I, what does it mean? It means it has a small resistance to uh, rotation or change in the rotation. So it will be easier to rotate than an object which has large, large I. Just by analogy and by comparison with the mass. Remember that large mass means difficult to move or to change the motion. Small mass, easy to move or easy to change the motion. Here, this is analogous to the mass, okay? But now we are in the rotation. So small i, small i for an object implies that small resistance to changes in rotation, okay? So if it is at rest and you want to rotate, it, it will be easy, easy to rotate, okay? If it is rotating and you want to stop it, it will be easy to stop. So it has a small resistance to the change. But if you have large I, an object has large I, what will happen? It, ha it will have large or big resistance. Okay, to changes in rotation. Okay, if it is at rest, it is not rotating, it will be difficult to make it rotating. If it is rotating and you want to stop it, it will be difficult to stop it from, uh, from the rotation. I hope with this you got a good idea about uh, the kinetic energy for rotation. It is one half I omega square. It is very similar to K in the case of translational motion, which is one half mv squared. And we defined this new physical quantity, which is the rotational inertia. It is the summation sigma over i, mi, ri squared. Thank you.